Hello there everyone and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Russo-Turkish War Battle Series using the Russo-Turkish War Mod. Last time around we did the Siege of Pleven where the main Russian army was held up at the fortified city of Pleven, resulting ultimately in a Russian victory, but as they were held up there for five months, they were unable pr to pursue their goal of uh, laying siege to Constantinople and he gave time to the other great powers of Europe to come to the Ottomans' aid to preserve the power balance of Europe. The British sent a navy, for instance. With that said, what we're doing today is we're going back to Shipka Pass. I think the third video in this series we showed the Russian and Bulgarian forces attacking and taking Shipka Pass and ultimately claiming a, num a number of other passes in the Balkan Mountains as well. Today we're going to look at an amalgamation of all the attempts by the Ottomans to try and retake the pass. This would have been very important because if the Ottomans would have retaken it, they could have threatened the siege. And as we know, the siege was very long and it was very difficult for the Russians to actually defeat the Ottomans. Had the, the pass fallen back into Ottoman hands, you could have seen counterattacks and almost uh, probably um, attempts at breaking the siege and relieving and in so doing saving the army that was sieged pulling them out of there, resulting in a war that would have been more confined to just northern Bulgaria rather than them being able to pass through the mountains and even threaten Constantinople, which would have ended in a little bit more favorable deal for the Ottomans. So there were a very... this battle would have been very important, very important for the Bulgarians. The important part about this battle is that it has a high concentration of Bulgarian troops and the Bulgarians are well aware of the stakes here. They're fighting for the freedom of their country. They've been under uh, Ottoman uh, occupation for over 400 years, so they're well aware of it. There are accounts of when the Bulgarians run out of ammo that they just start hurling rocks and even dead soldiers down at the Ottomans trying to retake the pass. So the Bulgarians fight tooth and nail to hold on to this and so it's very important to highlight that. With that said, I think we'll uh, jump straight into the battle, shall we? And so here we are, back again at Shipka Pass. This time around though, it's the Russian-Bulgarian force who is defending Important note here before we start is, of course, that we're not trying to recreate the battle. We're just trying to take the variables, like troop numbers, terrain, troop variation, as close as possible, and using historical to con using the historical context then to create a little bit more of an interesting custom battle scenario. With that said, for this one, we have gone ahead for balancing, issue, balancing issues to uh, take away the Ottomans' artillery. They did bombard the pass. However, in terms of bal as a balancing issue, you know how accurate and how deadly the artillery can be in this mod. So if the Ottomans had, as they have now, not only twice the manpower to attack the hill, but also artillery, there wouldn't have been a contest, there wouldn't have really been a battle, it would have been an assured victory for the Ottomans. So, for a balancing issue, the Ottomans do not field artillery, but in the actual battle, they would have bombarded the hill, but as we cannot get the real hill with the real defensive uh, situation, we have switched it around, so just the Russian-Bulgarian force has artillery. Most of the defenders would have been Bulgarians, as most of the Russian forces have, would have been sent over to the siege of Pleven. Um, so it's about a ratio 2 to 1 at certain points, I imagine it was probably even higher. In this case, for my defending force, I have three Russian units and six Bulgarian units to showcase the fact that there were more Bulgarians defending. 
you can uh, I, uh, I mean once again with the balancing issue you can just see what kind of mess I'm creating here with my artillery if the enemy would have been able to do this I would have been out uh, without a force within seconds now it of course didn't help that uh, my opponent here was uh, uh, fielding the troops in uh, very thick formations like that so that definitely helped with just the sheer amount that he lost there in the beginning um, compared to say here where he actually spread them out so these guys are gonna fare a lot better and f there's so many that I kinda forgot to target the right side uh, I thought also that th most of them would be um, if they were coming through here that they most would have been stopped here for long enough that I could if they came uh, here in great numbers that I would be able to uh, reinforce this region to stop them there. I was more concerned with them maybe pushing through straight through the center and uh, overtaking my artillery. Right now I'm focusing my artillery over on his left side. There's a bit of overlap as the troops move here. There's two units basically going within each other. So that's a great target. If you remember the first battle of Shipka Pass we played then the Ottomans kind of ambushed me over here. I'm trying to do the same thing where I've got one of my Bulgarian Legion units hidden in the forest ready to ambush them. We'll see that as these um, as the Ottoman right flank moves closer on this unit. At the same time artillery being bombarded. First Ottoman units to retreat. Uh, what I did was rather than tell the artillery to target the unit I targeted right in front of the unit, which means a much more uh, condensed uh, area where the shells land, which means absolute devastation for the unit. We can see this Ottoman unit right here losing hundreds of men. As the Ottomans are getting closer here, I'm about to release the fury of this um, unit. The thing though is I put them on fire at will. They fired at the closest unit was over here, so not that many units fired. So then I clicked on the unit to actually start firing here, so I got more firepower out of it. But of course, we have this one closer, in a nasty flanking position, firing up our side, so we've lost 23 men there. However, I am supporting uh, this unit by shelling these guys with artillery. At the same time as the Ottoman left, so they can't really flank me, um, the main assault is going in. The main force, of course, is being cut down severely in their advance. We've got two units here down to less than 100 men. Actually, both of these units together are barely 100 men. And then a little bit more over on the right, we've got more uh, intact units. But of course they're firing uphill against troops behind defensive positions. Behind defensive positions. So it's going to take a lot for them to break through here. And uh, I decided, compared to kind of learned some lessons from the last time we played here, to split up the defense. So we've got Bulgarians split up. Of course there's... Um, risk of these guys being flanked from either side but if these guys move forward to kind of come into a flank they will be hit by second line I'm moving back the troops that were set up over here to set them up on the high hill uh, to protect the flank the Ottomans are called into bayonet charge I believe to try and dislodge the centers here at the same time, we've got an Ottoman unit moving up to claim this hill to overlook and fire down upon the defenders here. If you remember, that's what I did when I attacked Shipka Pass last time. These guys are about to actually charge in. But we've got a similar situation to what happened when I tried to charge uh, last time when I attacked Shipka Pass in the first battle. Is that... Uh, it doesn't go too well charging in like that and the Ottoman force was 
and <laughs> entirely annihilated. However, they're putting so many troops we can see. So there's uh, three units here moving in to attack this Bulgarian legion. And then there's another three units coming in afterwards. The unit on the hill is destroyed and is forced away. They're sending up another one. Center attack has been more or less crushed. Um, on the left here, they're starting to envelop me. So I'm moving away the units here in the center. We can see a high amount of casualties on the flank here. So we're going back to defend on the sides. Still holding these guys because they're in a forest and behind cover. So that's pretty good. So there's heavy fight over here. At the same time, he's sending... He's got six units now. All charging down, attacking this one Bulgarian unit. Now, to because the Bulgarian units are militia, and they would rout pretty easily if I hadn't put chevrons on them. So I put quite a lot of chevrons on them to hold. The thing also, this is a pretty bad strategy in Total War to... Um, send troops on like that but uh, because as you can see most of the units aren't actually fighting they're just wasting stamina behind here uh, and it's not actually helping because they're not like uh, the better thing to do was to send them around and maybe envelop them and if we go over here maybe this is the point where I start to fire at I'm gonna start to fire into that uh, mess over there Okay, they're charging over here. The Bulgarian Legion is counter-charging. Bulgarian Legion over here is holding on. Um, this unit over here is holding on. I'm moving, the, since the main assault is down, I'm moving over my Russian troops to set up behind here so they'll be able to fire if these guys would dare to charge through here. One unit has actually just been defeated by the melee has been going on. But I think we're about to see an absolute massacre here as I am now starting to target this side here with artillery. There we go. And you know what deadly artillery is in this mod. And these uh, troops clumped together like this means such mass casualties. And there, he's, I think, yeah, they're all broken or shattered. So we've got six units here that were defeated by that. So the Bulgarian units held. They actually lost more, probably, men due to that artillery fire there than to the enemy trying to bayonet their way through. I'm going to send the Bulgarians after them to chase these guys down. We've got hundreds maybe even I would almost say a thousand Ottoman troops retreating over there they still got some guys on the hill firing down on my unit over here we got their general riding forwards he's probably gonna get shot at the same time over here together with the counter charge and just superior firepower we're able to push away the Ottomans over here Ottoman general gets shot down trying to charge the uh, Bulgarian legion that is set up over here. At the same time, the Bulgarian legion over here is still chasing down the retreating Ottoman troops. And now I'm targeting the few guys that are left here on the hill with my artillery and blowing them down. And I believe that is it. Shipka Pass has been defended by the Bulgarian force and here we've got the statistics of the battle. So I deployed a cool 3,000, so precisely 3,000 men compared to the Ottoman which deployed twice as many, 6,000 men. Um, and if we go through the unit statistics, I don't think this is accurate, as I've said before. I think the, um, the enemy or the artillery probably killed a lot more than that. I imagine you'd put at least uh, a two in front of that. So maybe 3,000 men killed by the pirate guns. Uh, then we've got the Bulgarian legions. 
um, doing a lot of the work here. So 800 kills for this Bulgarian Legion. Not entirely sure which one of these that is. It could very well be the one that's chasing them down over on that side. So that one Bulgarian Legion killing 821, followed by the next one killing 370 and so on. Russian line infantry not doing much, but they were held mostly in reserve. And uh, you can see that I put quite a high amount of experience on the units. I'm not entirely sure if... Um, now, in this case, I did lose one-third of my men just as the battle progressed. I think if you were to maybe redo the scenario, I would possibly lower the amount of... Um, chevrons here because it seemed like especially over here um, that one unit were being able to hold up so many enemies but I think mostly that was due to not so much m the melee capability because I don't think they actually there was too much melee kills but it was mostly the morale that it managed that the unit was holding like that and also it is not a good strategy to just pile on troops like that in a total war game. It would have been better than to use the superior numbers to try and flank around, so say maybe send two to actually charge and then send the rest down to dislodge this one and then the others to go around, a few moving forwards to hold up the Russians that were coming and then maybe one taking quite a while but one that was moving around instead of having six units fighting like this but as because as we saw even though there were six units there which means there was almost 2000 men or uh, close to 1800 men uh, that were fighting here against a single unit of 320 it was still about just like say the front lines of these two units and maybe uh, around like 150 men uh, on both sides fighting melee with each other and with them so so maybe as an alteration what you could do is lower the amount of uh, chevrons on the Bulgarian troops I don't think it would have changed too much but um, nine might have been too high so maybe change that down to say five um, and maybe give I, I thing is morale is pretty high already we saw some of the Ottoman forces here charging the one unit to charge over here they fought until there was like one guy left and he ran away so the morale is still pretty high in this mod um, so I don't know if that would have been changed then there's of course I mean most of it is down to the tactical stuff like uh, I imagine that uh, he wanted to do a similar kind of cool marching maneuver that I've done through uh, a number, uh, number of previous videos. Um, but he just implemented wrong with these thick formations and I took advantage of that and inflicted like a thousand casualties almost immediately. Uh, or at least I would imagine, yeah, like, well, maybe not a thousand, but say 500 or something right in, right in the beginning there so that wouldn't have worked out uh, so there's a this is some stuff that could be worked on this scenario I think but um, yeah there we go we've got the defense of ship pass of course this is an amalgamation because they, there was in total four battles the one in which the the first one where we the uh, Russians take the pass and then there's uh, subsequent ones where the Ottomans try to retake it. Kind of hard to replic replicate because of, um, as, as I've already explained. But there we have it. Um, and yeah, as always, I hope you guys enjoy this. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.